okay okay so tell me one thing let's say i have an optimization problem with this form minimize f of x subject to h of x equal to 0 versus another optimization problem with this form minimize f of x plus let's say c by 2 by the way h of x can be a vector valued function so it's So do they share the same optimal optimizer extra? Can also assume f is convex, h is convex, and so on. Right? So but what would be what could be a motivation behind looking at this kind of problem over this kind of problem, the original problem? In both cases, you have to work with the constraint, right? So let's take an example, okay. Let us take an example. Suppose I want to minimize minus x square, very simple example, subject to x is scalar, subject to square root of uh, let us say x square minus 4 equal to 0. Okay. Is this a convex problem? Is minus x square a convex function? No, right. So, the objective function is not convex. Okay. But if I consider an equivalent problem, by the way, what is the optimal solution to this? I mean, there is just one point, right? x square is equal to 4 is the only solution to it, in fact. So, negative 4 is the optimal value of this, right? Objective function. But if I consider another optimization problem in this form, I mean, this is a simple example, but let us say c by 2 x square minus 4 subject to x square minus 4. Okay, and I choose c to be greater than 2. By the way, here c is greater than 0. I choose c to be greater than 2. So, what happens uh, if I choose c to be greater? It becomes a convex function, right? So, a potentially non convex problem can also become a convex problem without like without you having to change the minimizer, right? And not just it is convex, in fact, it becomes strongly convex, right? Let us say if I if I work with equality constraint uh, like linear constraints here and if I take the norm of it you will get quadratic type of constraints and that would potentially make the original problem strongly convex for a large enough c even if you have the non convex term sitting over here. Constraint should be convex. So, anyway, let us say we, we are working with con con I am saying that linear constraints I mean anyway do not have to do with I mean they are both there are just a fine constraint, they can be both convex, concave, however you want to say it, right. So, let us say you just have linear constraints Ax equal to b, right. And if I take the norm of Ax minus b whole square, you will get something in terms of x square, right. And if A is let us say full row rank, you would in fact get a con strongly convex objective for a large enough value of c. So, the same optimization problem, which was an which was a non-convex problem to start with, becomes a potentially convex problem, right. And this is something really great and this is this is where this method of multiplier sort of comes into picture. So, so augmenting this quadratic penalty term or this quadratic cost to your original cost, this has two benefits, right. So, one is quadratic penalty makes the original object function. strongly convex or rather potentially strong potentially right I mean that may not be true for all kinds of equality constraints. So, uh, it makes the original objective function uh, strongly convex for large enough c the other thing is it basically has a softer penalty than something like log barrier. what do we mean by that? So, I could have written the same, I could have modified my objective as something like this. Let us say something log of 
something like this right this would have been this would have still been fine but then because of this log barrier so essentially you are saying that you do not let the h of x go uh, like away from 0 right so because that is the quality constraint that you are trying to enforce. So, I mean you can look at log barrier methods which try to achieve something like this. But in that case what happens is that you are going to be working with uh, in the interior of this thing right because log is not defined for negative values and that makes the iterates confined to a very small region and it basically adds to numerical instability of the algorithm that you are going to be designing right. So, iterates are confined in the strict uh, in strict strictly confined in the use. Let me write this. So, iterates are strictly confined in the interior. Whereas, if you add a quadratic penalty, it has a much smoother or much nicer sort of uh, landscape, right. So, what is the original let us say if I, uh, if I get back to the problem statement x in R in subject to h of x equal to 0. So, the Lagrangian for this would be L x nu which is defined as f of x nu transpose h x ok. Now, if I add this quadratic penalty to this particular term or your objective function without changing the problem. So, essentially if I have this right. What is the, so define a new Lagrangian here. Let us call, let us denote this by L c, L sub c, where c is uh, associated with this constant c here right. So, L sub c x nu and this is defined as f of x plus c by 2 plus new transpose h of x ok. So, from here you can see that by the way this is called augmented Lagrangian because you augment this quadratic penalty. So, this is called augmented Lagrangian. Okay. And L c basically turns out to be L x nu plus the ok. So, if I try and uh, run a saddle point problem on the original Lagrangian let us say I get my x star and nu star right. Now, this is a modified problem if I run a saddle point problem I am going to get let us say x prime and nu prime as the saddle point for this. So, the question is I mean the point is that you should be able to first of all if I am trying to look at the unconstrained optimization problem the solution to that like if I look at the corresponding Lagrangian they should return the same opt like same optimal values of x and nu as the original problem right. So, when does this work right. So, when does augmented Lagrangian work? As you can see that they would return different values of x star in here. Yeah, but then uh, you have changed the function right. So, so this is this is the L c is the your new Lagrangian for that new problem. Yeah. So, it would it would give you some op like let us say you can take a dual of it and then you find new star or the new prime corresponding to it and then you also find the primal of it x prime right that minimizes the that basically minimizes the Lagrangian and so on. So, you are going you are not guaranteed to get the same x star and new star that you would have gotten with the original problem the moment you take it to the Lagrangian. The original the two object optimization problems are the same right, but the moment you convert them into unconstrained optimization problem using Lagrangian. So, you may you may not get the same x star and u star with your augmented Lagrangian that you would have gotten with your x and u right because of this additional term. Now, if I try to minimize this with respect to x I am going to get something else right. So, 
constraint should still be satisfied. So, that is fine. I am saying that if I try and find a saddle point of this. So, for a given value of c, you may get some certain, let us say if for a given value, let us say if I fix c, the x that minimizes this Lagrangian that gives me the dual may not be the same x that minimizes the original Lagrangian, right? Because I have shifted everything, I may shift end up shifting everything, right? Sorry? Instead of the saddle point, I will also use the dual problem, convert it dual and then equate it. Mm -hmm. So, that, that is, so, okay, let us, let us, I think in order to clear the confusion, let us do that one, ex one particular exercise. Let me just write this statement. Okay, so let us take one particular example and I think it will be much clearer. So, See, minimize with respect to x1, x2. These are your primal, va primal variables f of x, which is defined to be half x1 square plus x2 square subject to x1 equal to 1. What is the optimal solution? What is x star here? 1, 0 because x1 is equal to 1 and this gets minimized when x2 is equal to 0. So, 1 comma 0 is the optimal x star. What is the optimal new star here? So, let us let us quickly look at. So, g nu is right and first of all is the problem convex right. Problem, con problem is convex and strong duality holds anyway there are no inequality constraints. So, primal x like uh, so essentially KKT conditions would not be satisfied, uh, they are both necessary and sufficient. So, let us, so you have half x1 square plus x2 square plus nu times x1 minus 1 right, minimize with respect to x. And if I set the derivative with respect to x2 to be 0, you get x2 star to be 0. And if I set the derivative with respect to x1, you get x1 star plus nu is equal to 0 or nu star is equal to 0 or nu star is equal to negative 1. So, nu star is equal to negative 1, okay. Now, look at the augmented Lagrangian. So, this is, this was the original Lagrangian. Now, let us, so as I said, we are going to add a constant to it. Uh, so, Lc x nu is going to be original function yeah because kkt conditions are satisfied right it's okay so now let's let us try and minimize it with respect to x1. So, you get x1 star plus uh, nu star or whether it is let us, I am just trying to minimize with respect to x1 and x2. So, plus nu uh, plus c times x1 minus 1 that is equal to 0 right or x1 star minus 1 that is equal to 0. So, which gives me uh, x2 star anyway is equal to 0. So, x2 star is equal to 0 is, is something that you directly get it from here. So, what is the value of x1 star here then? Uh, it is basically c minus nu upon c plus 1. Okay. So, this this depends on c now, right? When only when nu is equal to nu star. So, so that is the thing. So, when nu is equal to nu star, when either when nu goes to nu star, you you what you what do you get? x 1 star then goes to 
the optimal one that we wanted to we wanted it to get to or there is another way out right. Okay, well I can write this as 1 minus nu over c when 1 plus 1 over c and as c goes to infinity again x1 star turns out to be 1 x1 star goes to 1. So, there are two ways through which you can approach the same objective or same optim optimizer rather. So, that is the whole point let us say I have a so, when do we ensure that uh, the augmented Lagrangian and so, if if I take nu to be closer to nu star the original nu star right again we do not know the original nu star if we somehow take this nu let, let me I mean if this is not clear let me try to I mean we do not know the original nu right nu star. So, I take this nu closer to nu star and I take c closer to infinity then we can show that x goes to x star right. So, that is what we are trying to get at. So, how does and when does augmented so the mechanism for this particular approach to work is you somehow try and take this new closer to new star I mean you are not trying to solve the original problem first of all right. So, you do not know where new star is right there will be a new star yeah yeah because the objectives are the same yeah. So, that will like this I mean that will match the new star Will that match the news? Yeah, that will match the new star. Yes. So then in the end x star from this L C and the hmm. matches. Right. X star would match. But then again you do not know what new star is, right? But yeah. But it will come L C M. Right, L right. So if you if you are at new if you are at new star, you will get x star. So that is what we just saw, right? For any value of C. If you are at new star, you will get x star. Uh, I do not have the other problem where for a given value of c. So, for a given value of c let us say if c is below certain threshold even if nu is equal to nu star it is possible that c will not like I mean x will not be closer to x star. So, for this to work you want c to be up, like as long as c is sufficiently large this would work and in fact that is the result that we are going to be derive I mean not deriving today but stating today. So, there if c is sufficiently large and if nu is closer to nu star then x would be closer to x star the corresponding x would be closer to x star. So, that is the idea behind augmented Lagrange. Okay. So, the convergence mechanism as we have seen through this example is if you try, try and take nu somehow closer to nu star and c to inf infinity then we can show that uh, uh, we can show that in fact x x the optimal value of x basically goes to x star right. So, the idea is without having to solve for nu star if we can somehow if we are closer to that uh, even let us say we are farther away from nu star but if c is sufficiently large we can still converge to the optimal solution right. So, that is the idea so we do not have to solve for nu here. Yeah. Right? We are not really solving for nu. We are just trying to change, like increase this c. Maybe potentially, like with every iteration, we will be increasing the value of c, and we will be performing certain updates so that nu also tends to be closer to nu star. So if those conditions are satisfied, then for a sufficiently large c, you are basically you get x star to be closer to the uh, or the solution to the original Lagrange. So that is the idea. Okay. So. The, con the idea behind or the con the way this works is if x star nu star satisfy second order sufficiency conditions and c is sufficiently large or c is large enough. then x star is a
So what the statement says, so let's say x star nu star are the optimal solutions for the original Lagrangian, right? Now, if you choose c to be sufficiently large and you also assume that, I will write down what second order sufficiency conditions are, but let us say this, this pair x star nu star suffice, uh, satisfies the second order sufficiency condition. Then as a, like if you fix your, uh, if you fix a nu star and if you look at the augmented Lagrangian as a function of x. So this is, this basically, uh, this function closer to x star looks like a strict local minima or it has a strict local minima around x. In fact, x star turns out to be strict local minima. So, when I say strict, so you only get x star as the or only solution if you are closer to and it is local because if that means you have to be closer to nu star. So, around nu star you get a strict sort of bowl of uh, optimality where you can live with x star being the optimal solution. But that happens only for sufficiently large c, okay. But again the reason we want to work with the augmented Lagrangian is because it has a much nicer sort of convergence behavior than some of the problems where let us say when f of x is not, uh, when f of x is let us say convex but not strongly convex. So we have seen that for strongly convex we can accelerate optimization, right. That may not be the case for uh, simple convex functions and by make, by adding this quadratic penalty you can potentially uh, make the convergence much faster. So that is the idea behind uh, working with uh, augmented Lagrangian and also you can convert non-convex problem to convex problem. So when you, when you have a non-convex objective you would, like in this case for instance, uh, you, you, you can in fact see that, sh show that like for instance here, when nu star is equal to 1 uh, or nu star is equal to minus 1, uh, no matter what your c was, as long as c is positive, you were getting the same uh, like x1 star to be 1. For non-convex case, you want c to be at least certain value or some, there will be some threshold on c. So, so the, I mean in, in practice we do not know what c is, so with every iteration we just maybe the new c would be 1.2 times the previous c and so on, we keep on increasing. So that once it hits the threshold, uh, then you are like you can, you can basically solve for the optimal x star and u star. In general you cannot like I mean it really depends on the function that you can maybe for certain analytical functions you can quantify that. But in general it is not, it is very difficult to uh, know it a priori. So you start with some value of c and you just keep increasing it. Not divergence but it like there are some numerical stable, in its stabilities if c becomes really large right. So, so I mean you should not be starting at a very large value of c so that the updates that you are going to be making, uh, they are going to be dependent on c right. So I mean you do not make very large updates on your x's in some sense. So that kind of issues can be there but I mean usually you start with a small value of c and you gradually increase it so that uh, eventually you hit that threshold and that is that's how it usually works. So second order sufficiency condition. So we say x star nu, the pair x star nu star uh, satisfies second order sufficiency condition. So these sufficiency conditions are, so this is with respect to the original Lagrangian, x star nu star is equal to 0. Basically you have stationarity in both x and nu and you have phi transpose so for every y which is orthogonal to gradient vector gradient of h of x you kind of have this constraint. So as long as these two are satisfied, then you can show that x star is a strict local minimum of okay. So let us let us try and derive this. So you have your augmented Lagrangian x nu which is basically f of x 
this new transpose hfx. Okay, so this is nothing but your uh, L of x mu. All right, so. So what is this quantity? In the point wise multiplication right of individual terms. So this is nothing but uh, gradient of f of x plus So if I if you now take the double derivative of this because we want to show if it is if it has to be a strict local minima then we have to show that even for the LC here this is going to be greater than 0 right that is why that is when it is a strict local minima. So even for LC this has to be greater than 0. So if you take the double derivative of this this turns out to be this term plus let us try to write it this way which is much easier. So, if the second order sufficiency conditions hold uh, Okay. And I consider y which are orthogonal to gradient of h of x. So, the moment I multiply this with, with this y sorry h of x transpose the moment I uh, sort of multiply this with y this particular term is equal to 0 because of this constraint right. So, let me first write down the hash uh, this particular term here in terms of x and then it will be clear. So, Through n, e y star transpose. So, this is nothing but this additional term because this is anyway going to be subsumed in the original Lagrangian. So, this is now to this if I take y transpose y this is going to be y transpose this particular term which is greater than 0 plus c times this particular term which is which because of this particular thing. So, what what do we get this is greater than 0 right for uh, with ok. So, what is this kind of like so, if I look at this matrix this matrix is positive semi definite right. So, there is a result uh, let me quickly write down this result. So, this matrix acts like a positive definite matrix because y transpose this thing is greater than 0. This is like a positive definite matrix. So, there is this result in linear algebra like if p and q are the two symmetric matrices. Okay, with q being positive semi definite and p to be positive definite in the null space of q. Again, so this is positive definite only in the null space of Q, right? So, in the null space of Q, then there exists a constant C bar uh, greater than 0 such that P plus C Q 
is always positive definite for every c greater than or equal to c. So, there exists a sufficiently large c such that this is always positive definite and therefore, you can say that this is strictly I mean this is a strict local minima and therefore, you have strict inequality and that is this this c bar is what we are going to be looking at in when we look at few more examples. Uh, so, unfortunately, today I do not have uh, like for like further examples to provide on this particular work, but then uh, in the next lecture we are going to be looking at potentially uh, non convex functions and then there you would see that unlike this particular case that we looked at where this worked for all c's when nu was equal to nu star you would see that for those class of functions uh, not all, all c would not work 